In this video, I'm going to teach you how you can calculate the pH of a buffer solution. And to do this, we're going to run through a really simple work example, step by step, that will be really easy to follow. So our question is, what is the pH of a buffer solution formed from adding 1,000 centimeters cubed of 0.8 moles per dm cubed of sodium hydroxide to 1,000 centimeters cubed of 2 moles per dm cubed of benzoic acid? So let's start with the first step which is to calculate the number of moles. So we need to find the number of moles of the sodium hydroxide here and of the benzoic acid. Benzoic acid is a weak acid, and for a weak acid, we tend to use HA to represent any generic weak acid. And all of the formulae are based on HA, so that's gonna make our life a little bit easier. So we're gonna split this into two. We're gonna find the number of moles of NaOH, then find the number of moles of HA, which is nice and simple. We've got N equals CV, N being the number of moles times the concentration times the volume. We have to watch out for the units. We've got moles per dm cubed here, and we have 1,000 centimeters cubed. So we have to use consistent units. So we'll need to divide this by 1,000 to get it into consistent units. So we've got N equals 0 0.8, which is our concentration here times our volume divided by 1,000 to give us 1, and so we get 0 0.8 moles of NaOH. Exactly the same thing for our weak acid, HA. So we do N equals C times V, substitute in just as before, 2 for our concentration, and then we've got also a volume of 1,000, so that needs to be divided, and we get 1 there, and so we've got 2 moles of our weak acid, which we're gonna call HA, which refers to our benzoic acid. So we've now got the number of moles of our two important substances. And so we can move on to the next step and think about our acid dissociation constant. Now we can obtain the acid dissociation constant from this equilibrium. So our weak acid is going to be slightly dissociating into H+, which is our acid particle, plus A minus, which is our conjugate base. And we can find an expression for the constant for this, the acid dissociation constant, which is going to be Ka. And this is a value that you can simply get from a data table for our benzoic acid. And it's simply the product of the concentrations, these brackets mean concentration, of our H plus multiplied by the concentration of our conjugate base divided by the concentration of our weak acid, which in this case is benzoic acid. And again, we can find Ka very simply by looking at a data table. And this equation is going to come in handy later. But the key thing is we need to find the concentration of our conjugate base and the concentration of our weak acid to be able to use this to find our concentration of the H plus from which we can actually calculate the pH. So let's look at how we find the moles after the reaction, which is going to be a key step in finding out what our pH is and what concentrations we need to put into that Ka expression. So we need to think about the equation for this reaction. So basically, we have sodium hydroxide reacting with a weak acid, and that's going to produce water plus Na joined with whatever is here. So our conjugate base is going to join on with the sodium. And so we take the start of the reaction. So we know that we've got 0 0.8 moles of sodium hydroxide. We know that we've got two moles of benzoic acid or our weak acid. And that comes from the previous calculation. And initially, we don't have any of the NaA because we haven't actually done the reaction yet. Obviously, this one here is in excess. This is a balanced equation, so it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So at the end of the reaction, we're going to have none of this left. All of that's going to react. We're going to be left with 1.2 moles, so 0.8 moles of this will have reacted, and we'll end up producing 0 0.8 moles of this because this is our limiting reactant, and so that's why we can only produce 0 0.8 moles. So we've now got the actual moles that's being produced from this reaction. From this, we can move on and start calculating the concentrations. Finding the concentrations is going to be very simple. We've already found how many moles of the two substances we're interested in. And what we can notice is we've added 1,000 centimeters cubed, 
and 1,000 centimeters cubed together. So we're going to have 2,000 centimeters cubed. So when we calculate the concentration, we're simply going to do the number of moles divided by the volume. That's just rearranging it. And I've put two here, which is the 1,000 plus 1,000 divided by 1,000 to convert it into consistent units. And so we're going to get a concentration of your weak acid of 0 0.6 moles per dm cubed. And then of our NaA, we're going to get 0 0.4 moles per dm cubed. And obviously, Na and then your conjugate base, that's going to fully dissociate. So your concentration of A minus is going to be the same as what the concentration of, of this is. So that's why we can just say that those two things are equal. So we've now got our two relevant concentrations for our Ka expression. So we need to find the hydrogen ion concentration. And we've got our Ka expression from before. And we can just substitute what we know into this expression. So this is what we know. We've calculated this previously. We can look up using a data table, what is the Ka value for benzoic acid? And when you look it up, that's the value that you get. Substitute all of this information into this equation. And then with a simple rearrangement, you can find the hydrogen ion concentration. And we get this value here. We are almost at the stage where you can calculate the pH. We just need to recall the equation for the pH. So pH comes from this equation where the pH is the negative logarithm. And this is, of course, a base 10 logarithm of the hydrogen ion concentration. So we just stick the hydrogen ion concentration into that equation, stick it in there and evaluate it. And we get a pH of 4.03. We've now calculated the pH of this buffer solution. This is one method. I'm going to quickly show you another method. The alternative method is a little bit of a shortcut, and it uses this equation that the pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of the concentration of the base divided by the concentration of the acid. And again, this is the base 10 logarithm. And so we take what we know, and we can also find a value for the pKa simply by taking it from a data table, or you can actually calculate the pKa from the Ka. So then we substitute all of the values that we know into this equation, stick that into a calculator, and you simply get a pH of 4.02, which is virtually identical to our previous value, but there's a little bit of error in the value of Ka and the value of pKa that accounts for that tiny difference. So hopefully you've seen two methods for how you can calculate the pH of a buffer solution, and you can now calculate the pH of a basic buffer solution. I hope this video was helpful to you. If this video did help you, please comment below to say so, and like the video and subscribe so other people can discover these videos if they're really helpful to you. And finally, thank you very much for watching.